Okay, so here we're going to tie my uh, one of my favorite streamers. Um, this one's called the Swim Coach, and I'm going to tie you a yellow version, which is as of yet not available, but I think something that we're going to introduce here in the next year. And uh, I'm going to start with a uh, Daiichi 2461, and we're going to tie a full size swim coach. Uh, so this is a 2461 size four. This is going to be the rear hook. Uh, this is an articulated fly, so he's going to have two hooks. Uh, I'm going to start with some 3 out Danville monocord in yellow. And I'm going to dress just the oh, front quarter or so of this hook shank. And at this point, I'm going to take just a tiny little bit of yellow ice dubbing. I'm going to twist this on my thread. We're going to use this as a spreader. Um, the whole idea of this fly um, is that we're going to have a, a fly with a wide profile, but without a lot of materials. Um, I don't like casting big, heavy flies. I like big flies, but I don't like casting them. Uh, so I was trying to build a fly that had a, a big outside profile without uh, a ton of materials or uh, that was heavy to cast. Uh, so I just put that little ball of dubbing on, and that's going to be a spreader. Then I'm going to take, oh, six or eight or 10 strands of uh, light olive ripple ice fiber, six or eight strands or 10 or 12, just a little pinch of each of these, and then some yellow ripple ice. And I just stack all three of those colors on top of each other. I don't worry about trying to keep them even at all. And I'm gonna tie these in at the center of their length. I'll fold that front end back and just let that dangle back. And you can see that's fairly ragged. If you got anything extra long, you can trim it out, but I don't want that cut square. I want that sort of sort of ragged. Um, I realize that is now coming off the screen. So fairly long. And now I'm gonna build a collar. And this is the part of the fly that, that the whole fly is based off of. Um, this collar is gonna be um, uh, American Possum, and we're gonna use dyed yellow. Um, in a dubbing loop. So I'm gonna take, this is a Dynaking dubbing whirl, and I'm gonna take this dubbing whirl, and I'm gonna make a loop that's about maybe three or four inches. I'll cross my thread over it to close it up, and then I'll slide my material spring forward, and I just take one leg, and I put it in my material spring. Let me bump you over just a little bit here. Looks like an earthquake. Uh, there we go, that's a little better. Um, you can see back here in my material spring, this leg I've got kind of propped up in my material spring. That'll keep that from spinning in the meantime. Um, and I'll show you, the, show you the tool here as we get going. Um, so then to put the fur in the loop, um, there's all kinds of tools sold these days. Um, you know, and the idea is that they uh, make it easier to, to make a dubbing loop, but really I just use my fingers and I'm not gonna use a whole lot of fur. What I'm gonna do is separate out a clump here and I'll cut it off the hide, close to the hide, and I just pinch it in my fingers, like so. Sometimes there'll be some of these extra long guard hairs, and I'll usually peel those out. If I don't get all of them, I don't worry too much about it. And I'll take this fur, and I'll take my, my loop here, and I'll put this fur in between the two strands of the loop, and then I'll come in and I wanna Trim the, the butt ends of that fur a little more square. We'll tuck them right up to the, to the ends. So that is now in our dubbing loop. And I'll pinch the, pinch the threads right underneath the fur, and then I'll spin the tool. And let that spin up, and that'll make a big, wild strand of fur chenille. And once you get that on there, you can Kind of use your dubbing brush to kind of pick out anything that got bound down. Not usually, uh, there's not usually too much that's bound down in there. So now I'm going to use the tool to wrap these, and I'm going to wrap this just like a like a wet fly style collar. Kind of comb it back after each turn, and it doesn't take much. You know, even what I've got in there might be a bit much. Sweep that back. So I end up with bare thread, and then I'll tie that off on the bare thread with a few turns and trim that out. Um, that's the Dunny King dubbing whirl, by the way. 
Then I'll take my, my dubbing brush here and just sort of sweep everything back. You're just making a big, you know, kind of fur hackle collar. So I want that all swept back. We'll take a few turns over the front edge there. You can see how big that fly got very quickly with very little material on it. So we've got a, a big outside profile, not a whole lot of stuff in there. Um, and then to, uh, to finish off the front end of the back hook, I'm gonna take a mallard flank feather. Let's find us a nice pretty one here. Um, and these start off like this. And what I'll do is I'm gonna create a separation point at the tip. And I don't need very much fiber here. Uh, so all the stuff on the bottom end, I can strip off. So that I'm left with like so. I want fairly long, long fibers, at least as long as that, uh, or close to as long as that fur is. And I'm gonna tie this in by its tip end here, just up here behind the hook eye. And you do wanna make sure you anchor it tightly. So I like to come forward over that tip and then fold that back again and catch it again. And usually I'll come in and trim that tip out just so we don't have that big clump in there. Grab my good scissors here. So now I'm gonna pick this up and grab the base of this feather in my hackle pliers. And I'm gonna fold these fibers back. Um, again, just like a, like a partridge feather or a, a hen saddle feather. I'm gonna fold these fibers back to one side, creating a V. You can see the, the stem is at the center of that V if I hold that just right for you. I'm gonna sweep those back and I'm gonna to start to wrap. And it kind of helps to, to comb these back after each turn. And tie that off just behind the hook eye. Come in and trim that, that stem out. And I'm just going to build a nice smooth little thread head over this. And I'll whip finish right on top. So that's the back end. Get a good tight whip finish, maybe get a couple just to smooth that off. I'll come in with my dubbing brush just to sweep that back. So that adds a little bit of modeling to the fly. Um, we'll put a little shot of Solar as Bone Dry Plus on that thread head. And typically when I do a bundle of these, I'll, uh, I'll do all the back hooks first and then come through and uh, attach them to the front hook. Uh, so they're sort of stage tied. But we've got our, our back hook taken care of. Um, now I'm going to set up my, my front hook. So bear with me. I'll be right back. All right. Now we're going to continue on with the, uh, the front hook. And this is a uh, Daiichi 2461 size 2. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is take a quarter inch gold bead. Put that on the hook like so, and then start the yellow thread behind it. Now what I wanna do here on the back half or so of the hook is to build a nice even thread base all the way back to the bend and then forward again. And I'll take some Senyo wire and I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna tie it just off center on the far side of the hook, uh, or just off the top on to the, toward the far side, and wrap back over it all the way tight to the bend. And then I'll take a 3D bead, and I'm gonna use a yellow one here, and I'll thread that on there. And that, the idea of that 3D bead is that's gonna give us some distance between the fly, uh, but it also helps to keep the, the front hook, excuse me, the, the back hook from, from fouling on the front hook. So I'll thread my back hook on there and then I'll push that wire right back through that 3D bead. Like so. And I'll catch the other end sort of on my near side of the hook. And I want to wrap over that. Nice and tight, very firm wraps here. Anchor in that down good and 
good and tight to the hook shank to about halfway up. Now don't cut that wire with your good scissors. Uh, I'm going to use my, my D-bar pliers here, the cutters. I'll lop that end off. And then typically a shot of super glue here, but had some it'll work because I'm not going to wait for the super glue to dry. So uh, for the record, when I uh, am tying these in a batch, I'll super glue that and whip finish that there and leave that alone. Just let that let that sit and then I'll come back and do them all at once. So uh, we'll just imagine that that was super glue, even though it's not really. So now I'm going to add some weight. Um, that big bead is going to be the spreader for the front of the fly. So the weight is really going to come from this lead wire. Um, and that's just a brass bead. Um, I don't use a tungsten bead there because I've got room for the lead. This is a big fly, so I don't need to, to go to the expense of tungsten. Um, but I'm going to make several 10, 12, 13 turns of 025 to 035 lead wire. And I'll break those ends off. And you can see I can push that bead back over the top of that. So that'll create some room there. And I'll cross hatch that just to sort of anchor that in place. Now I'm gonna take another mallard fling feather and this is just going to kind of cover this, this joint between the two. Uh, let's find a good one here. So I want a little bit bigger feather here. And I'll prep it the same way that I did on that first hook, creating that separation point. Like so, you can see I've just stroked the fibers back. I'm going to tie this in at the bend. And I'll grab the butt end in my hackle pliers and I'll fold this feather the same way I did that first one. Um, sometimes that happens right there. Sometimes that pulls out and breaks. Um, what I did there is just tied that in too close to that fine tip. So I'm just going to bump him back a little bit. Get on a little bit coarser piece of, of feather. Unwind those turns and tie this in again. We'll try that one more time. So I'm going to fold those fibers back. I'm going to start to wrap this feather back here at the bend. And I want these, these turns really just in front of the hook bend. Um, and they'll tangle around the hook bend as you wrap them. They're not going to kind of splay out real pretty just yet. Um, but I'm not too terribly worried about that. We'll have a chance to fix that. Um, as a matter of fact, don't, don't be tempted to sweep them with your fingers because they'll uh, they're buried there with the hook point, and you'll invariably end up with that hook point stuck in your hand, which is no fun for anybody. Uh, so once I've got that tied off, then I could take my dubbing brush and sweep those fibers back. And you can see how that sort of bleeds that front hook into the back hook a bit better. So now I'm going to take a little pinch of hot yellow ice dub again. Same dub that we used on the, on the back hook. And I'm going to just direct dub this to build a fat body. So I've just twisted one end up. You can see how the rest of the clump is fairly loose. And I'm going to start wrapping. And as I wrap, that dubbing clump twists around the thread and allows me to build this big fat body pretty quickly, just up to cover up that lead, like so. So now I'm going to take my cone, or I'm sorry, my, my bead, and push it back, and I'll just jump the thread over it to the front. You can see I've only got about a quarter of a shank left in front of that bead. Um, again, that bead is going to be used as the spreader here. The whole idea of that is that it's going to help spread those fibers. Um, so I'm going to continue with my thread base up to the hook eye and back again. Um, the, the thought process on this is that this is going to help to, sp to stand those fibers up so that the bigger the bead there, the, the better off you are. Um, now I'm going to take and make one more little dubbing loop. This one doesn't have to be very big. And I'll take another little pinch of that same yellow possum. Doesn't take much. Um, you hear me keep saying it doesn't take much, it doesn't take much. It really doesn't. Um, you know, in the case of these flies, uh, we're trying to build a big fly with a little bit of material, so don't uh, don't get carried away and and use a big wad. I'll put this little pinch in between those two strands of the dubbing loop. 
twist that up. And I don't let this twist crazy. This this hair is fairly stiff as it is. You know, it looks like uh, looks like rabbit fur, but it's got a, a fair bit more uh, rigidity to it. So that's one of the things that makes it stand up so well. Uh, rabbit fur is not a good substitute for for what we're trying to do here. And I'll tie that off with a couple of turns. Trim that center out. We'll sweep that back, just get a couple turns there. You can see the, the whole idea is to sort of jam this up against the front edge of that cone. And that buys me a little more room for the work I've got to do here. So you can see how that's standing up pretty tall. Get these few loose fibers out of the way here. Now I'm going to take that same flash that we used on the tail end. So same kind of multicolored gold, light olive, and yellow ripple ice fiber. And I'll just take these and stack them on my, on my desktop. And I'm going to lay these in sort of at an angle across the hook and tie them down at the center of their length with a couple of turns. Then I'm going to pull the front end back and let it spread so that that flash ends up tied in in a big wide V. Uh, again, that's creating area. And then I'll take one more mallard feather. And I'll tie it in at the, by the tip at the front edge of that flash. I'll grab it in my hackle pliers and I'll fold those fibers back. So you can see what you did on the first hook is what you do two more times on the on the front hook. So while this fly seems complicated, it's it's really fairly easy to tie. There's not a lot of different materials on this one. A couple fibers getting bound up there. A couple turns of mallard. You can see that just adds the sort of variegated highlight. Anchor that down. I usually brush that out just a bit, just to loosen those fibers up. Uh, this fly obviously has some steelhead fly uh, lineage. Is sort of where this comes from. Um, get you a little better focus there. And then to finish them off, we're going to put in yet one more collar. Um, and again, I'll say it one more time. It's not going to take very much. Um, we're going to make another little dubbing loop. We don't have much room there, so we don't need much and, or have room for much. I'll pull those guard hairs out. I like to square those ends up a bit. So we've got a nice clean, clean edge on them. And I'll put this in my dubbing loop. And I'll spin that up. I'll let that spin. Kind of make that big fur chenille head. And I'm going to start to wrap this just in front of that, that mallard. Um, now typically I'll wet my fingers a bit and I kind of let these wraps almost overlap. They kind of really pack in tightly here at the front. You can see I can kind of pull back and give myself some room. It's just that thread core that needs to go tightly around the hook. Everything else is standing out from it. So that it's standing up tall like that. And that's going to give us a lot, of, a lot of height and width to the fly. And I'll trim that out. Wet my fingers a bit. Just again, just treat this like a, like a big soft tackle. I'll build just a little thread head there. It's not going not to be very big or very prominent at all. And then I'll whip finish just up there behind the hook eye. All right, we're looking pretty good. And now to kind of get our final shape, I'm just going to use my brush a bit to sweep everything back. And I'm going to take some six millimeter living eyes. Uh, these are, uh, I'll pull them up here and show them to you. Sort of a gold color, um, and you know, honestly, you could use whatever, uh, whatever eyes you like. Okay, so we probably had a uh, bit of an abrupt uh, 
segue there. Um, I decided I didn't like the way I was doing the eyes on that first batch, so I uh, um, am going to show you uh, a little bit easier way to do them. And I'm going to still try to do it in the vise so that you can see them, but I think I can do it a little better now. Um, what I've done in the with the fly in the meantime is I wetted it down and let it dry. And you can see that swept some of this hair back. And then I've come in with my scissors and trimmed off anything that was short up here um, to kind of smooth the base for the eyes that we're about to put on. Um, and what I've got are some 3 16th inch uh, holographic dome eyes um, in gold color, but really the color is up to you. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the fly and I'm gonna take, this is some solar as medium, and I'm gonna take and just squeeze a little dab onto the side of the fly. And I'm going to take one of these eyes and just set it on top of that solar as. Um, now, one of the tricks, kind of get that where you can see it. Uh, one of the tricks to keeping that off of your fingers um, is to use a half inch tool, and you can press that eye into place without getting the resin on your fingers. And I'll just cook that for a second. That's just going to tack that eye down. And then I'll do the same thing on my near side here. I want to obviously try to keep the eyes symmetrical. Another little glob on there. And one more eye. And as you do more of these, you'll get a little more adept at getting them in place. So I'll push him down right in line and then cook that a bit. And then those eyes are tacked in. Now what I want to do here is I want to build a bit of a, a mask up here around the front of the, the head. Um, so the mask, the resin mask, is going to come from the, from the hook eye or the thread head um, up about halfway up the eyes. Um, so I'm not going to cover the eyes, I'm, I'm going to cover just the front half of the eyes. Um, and again, I usually do this in my hand, but I'm trying to get it so that you can see it. So hopefully I won't screw it up too bad. But I'm going to take a glob of that resin and put it on my needle. And sort of smooth it from eye to eye across the top of the fly. Um, and it'll start to kind of sink in to the fur there, which is, which is good. That's sort of what we're shooting for. I'll do the same thing on the bottom. You've got plenty of chance to sort of work with this stuff. You know, resin, that's the, the beauty of resin, is it doesn't cure until you say it cures. So um, you've got a lot, of, a lot of working time. So I'm going to build that mask on the front end there. Just kind of smooth everything out. And again, I'm coming up about halfway up the eye on both sides. Get just a touch more here. Wipe my extra off, and then I can kind of smooth this out. And again, um, you know, usually I'll do, you know, all the flies up till this point, and then do the. Uh, uh, do the eyes all at once, and I, I will say that uh, you know, sort of doing them in a batch like that, you get a little more practice. You're a little more smooth with it, but that's our uh, pretty happy with that coat there. And then cook that from far away, kind of on and off with the lamp to get those cured in. And then you can see again down here, I've got some resin on those individual fibers. I can just sort of peel those out. And we'll fluff our fly up again. And that is our, our finished swim coach. That, uh, um, this is a really swimmy fly. It, uh, uh, this back end really wiggles around a lot in the water. It's 
very limp. It's got a lot of action to it. Um, and this is a, a big fly that doesn't use a lot of material. So it's relatively easy to cast and, uh, uh, you know, sinks well, uh, which was the whole idea. But that's my, uh, my sort of version of the, uh, of a, a steelhead uh, style uh, trout streamer. Uh, that's the swim coach. And uh, keep your eye out for it. Pick you up some, tie, tie up some, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.